Okay. So, uh, so today we're going to uh, just give a quick example of how we use stoichiometry. So again, the reason that we use stoichiometry is because if we want to know, without doing a lot, a lot of experiments, we want to know sort of fact of the envelope calculations, what's the maximum possible amount of yield we can get. Uh, so say your boss has said, I think we can do 50% better at the fly rack if you can increase the yield, I know you can. You can go to this sort of approach and say, this is the stoichiometry, it's like thermodynamics, it's not physically possible to get those yields, um, given what we're putting in. So uh, it, it's a useful, this stoichiometry approach is a useful back of the envelope kind of approach. And you can use rules of thumb and get good estimates of uh, what's going to happen in your, in your system. So uh, we're going to do an example of that and uh, talk about it a little bit more and then hopefully uh, have time to get to starting to talk about, which is most of what we're going to talk about for the rest of the, the term. Uh, different ways of running bioreactors. So we talked about the basic CSTR. We're going to talk about different ways of running those bioreactors. Okay, so the example is looking at uh, two different uh, substrates and what the effect is of two different substrates and ultimately what we're going to do is calculate what the different yields are based on stoichiometry for the two different substrates. So we've got hexadecane. 
telling you important things about what your stoichiometric coefficients are, right? But as long as you have a starting mass of... So you can use a basis if you want. What I did is a basis of one mole hexadecane. Uh, well, remember you have to convert it to weight for weight. Okay. I suggest we actually only do this uh, in class for the first one, for the hexadecane, um, because it becomes repetitive to do it for the glucose. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually share the answers for the glucose. Does everyone remember their molecular weights? Okay. So the total carbon would be 192 grams? Yeah. And then two thirds of that is converted? Yeah, exactly. That's the taxi that I remember. Yep. Yeah, 16 times 12. Yeah. So it's basically saying that two thirds of it is going into biomass and one third of it is going to carbon dioxide. So I know some of you are still 
working on the numbers, but I think everyone has the concept of how to get those yields. Uh, so I just wrote out the, the answers for all of this. Um, I didn't make you go through the glucose part of it, but feel free to do that for practice. Uh, for hexadecane, you'll see that the yield is actually significantly higher than it is for glucose. And that's because the hexadecane is actually a lot more reduced, so it uh, can be converted more directly into cells. So you get a better yield for a more reduced cycle. On the other hand, uh, you get a better yield for the amount of oxygen that you put in for glucose, and that's because it's already partially oxidized, so you don't have to put as much oxygen in with the glucose in order to get cells out of the, the whole deal. Okay? Um, so it's just C times the molecular weight of fat. Uh, there you go, 91.34. Times 2.42. Yeah. Times 2.42 divided by the molecular weight of hexadecane. 92.2. No, it shouldn't. It should be more than that, right? Because of the 34 hydrogens. Pardon? What's the molecular weight of hexadecane? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. I'm <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. So in the first part, you're just using the molecular weight of the amount of carbon because that's what you're told about. In the second part, you actually need the full molecular weight of the cells, the full molecular weight of the hexadecane because you're talking about grams per gram. Okay. Any question about the example? Okay, so uh, the other thing that I said this allowed you to do was uh, use rules of thumb. Um, so other rules of thumb are that for aerobic fermentation, uh, the growth yield per growth yield per Available electron and oxygen uh, is 3.14 minus 0.11 grams cell dry weight per electron. means we can very easily calculate the cellular yield.
your yield is just
don't, we're not using the cells to make anything. In this case, what we're trying to do is use the cells to get rid of the substrate because we really don't want this substrate left in it. So we're using the cells to, to treat wastewater. So in this case, we want to know, you know, environmental regulations are specifying how low the benzene has to go to before we're allowed to release our wastewater into the wilds. So it has to go really low. So the question is, how big must your bioreactor be? Okay. So we need to know some things about our cells. What do we need to know? In order to design how big our bioreactor is. We were just had our normal CST array that we've talked about in the past. Cost of building a bigger CST. Well, sure, we know it's expensive to build enormous CSTRs, but what do we need to know about the cells that we're putting into it in order to figure out how big the CSTR needs to be? How fast? Yeah, how fast they grow, right? Because how fast they grow determines how fast they use up substrate. Right? Because they're using up the substrate in order to grow. So their the rate of substrate use is related to their growth rate. Okay, so we need to know
you put in a lot more cells that are growing slowly in your overall reactor, then you're better. But how do you get, we've already determined that if we have a normal reactor like this, because of the dilution rate, you calculate the number of cells, we don't have control over that. Can't you just incubate your cells in somewhere else first to get a higher cell count and then dump them in? But even if you do that, if, once you hit steady state, we've already got the calculate, like you'd, you'd, start, you'd start high, but eventually basically they dilute, dilute out to a very low steady state because your growth rate wouldn't be replacing the dilution rate. So very close, very, very close. I actually have a question. Yeah. How can you minimize S if you don't have, like, like if you just minimize S, there's no point in which you're trying to get to with minimum S. Like so, so what you're trying to get to is whatever your environmental regulations require. Okay. So you obviously are never going to get to zero with an approach like mm -hmm. this. Um, so you have your set point as something very slightly less than your environmental regulations require, unless you have another treatment method afterwards. But you, you would have a, a finite but small S requirement. Okay, so, so Carl was close. He's saying somehow concentrate your substrate. Difficult. Um, if we had an easy way of concentrating our substrate and getting it out of there, then we'd be using that. This is meant to be the easy way of doing it. Flocculation. Flocculation of what? So we're trying to increase the concentration. I don't think of any ways that you could. So we've got cells. We're not putting any cells in currently, but we're taking some cells out. You can recycle the output stream. Exactly. Exactly. So you could take your, there's your bioreactor. You've got some chlorine coming in. You've got X naught, which is usually zero. You've got S naught, which is the amount that you want to treat. And then ultimately, you have some flow rate coming out. Um, now, I'm going to say X2. We have our substrate amount coming out. And what we have now is a way that we're going to recycle some of the cells back in. So we can take our, we have stuff coming out here, we can concentrate them, maybe using a centrifuge or something like that, um, and then put a concentrated amount of cells back into the reactor continuously. So it's making cells at a very slow rate, but instead of losing them all on the exit stream, we can recycle some of them back in, and that'll increase our cell concentration, which will increase our total conversion of your substrate. But the reason they're growing slowly is because there's so much substrate. There's nothing more in it. It's going to increase the total growth rate because there's only so much substrate to take. So out. remember that it won't increase your specific growth rate, but it increases the overall growth rate because remember your overall, did you put an overall balance? Your overall growth rate equals next. So each cell isn't growing any faster, but you're still giving the same amount of substrate down to a much more concentrated group of cells. But if I have 100 grams of, I have 100 apples. Yeah. And I go put 10 people in a room and I say eat 100 apples. Or I put 100 people, people in a room. Sure, 100 people in a room. There still is only 100 apples to eat regardless of how many people I'm subjecting. But you're always putting, so, you're always putting, so. But there's only so much substrate for 10 or 100. But, but then it takes less time for them to eat the 100 apples, right? So this is a continuous thing. So you're saying that now we can flow it through much faster. So you're not keeping the reactor the same size anymore. You're actually shrinking the reactor, which is like shrinking the amount of time, right? So you're putting, if you, it's like saying, if you put 100 people in the room to eat 100 apples, now they can do it if they just have five minutes. Whereas if you put 10 people in a room to eat 100 apples, it's gonna take them 50 minutes. Which is like your dilution rate. So the two wants to go find the apple. I guess it works. 
So it, it does. I mean, if you kept your reactor the same size, then sure, you might in fact run out of substrate altogether and your cells would start starving and it wouldn't be a good scene. But what this lets you do is with a known exit substrate concentration, it allows you to have a much, much smaller reactor, which is like decreasing the amount of time for the people eating the apples. Would the residence part of the reactor help with the cleaning of them or does it not really have So it's the same idea, exactly. You have a shorter residence time for your substrate because you have a greater dilution rate, right? So a shorter residence time. So it's like the shorter residence time is the amount of time the cells have to eat the apples. So you have more people, shorter residence time, fewer people, longer residence time. Okay, so um, I'll just set it up. Um, I don't think we have time to do the, the cell balance on this, so we'll do that next week. Um, but we have to think about how we're actually concentrating it. So coming out of the reactor and in the reactor itself, we're going to have a cell concentration of X1. And in this concentrator, we don't have the ability to concentrate substrate. That's going to stay the same. So this, say, so this is, say, a centrifuge or a settler. concentrate cells. So the thing is, if you just recycle all of it, then you have to recycle your substrate as well. So what you're trying to do is separate out your substrate from your cells. Right, so you're still trying to have an exit stream, but you're trying to just bring the cells back into the wire reactor. Okay, so because we're concentrating it, we're going to say, the concentration of the cells coming back out is C, which is your concentration factor. Concentration factor, so say it's two times more concentrated than your exit stream, so C would be two. So you have twice the concentration of cells going back into the reactor as they're coming out of the reactor. Okay. And now we have to think about what our flow rates are. We know that to have steady state, our flow rate coming out has to be F. Because we've got F going in. So otherwise we'd start either draining our reactor or filling it up. Right. So what does that mean? If this has to be F, and we know that we're recycling some, does this then have to be higher than F? Okay, so we actually are going to call this one plus alpha times F. And if we just do a balance, that means the amount of flow here has to be alpha F. So alpha is some proportion of F. So say 20% of the flow is being recycled back into the reactor, F would be 20%. Okay. But that would mean that you have to be taking out of the reactor 120% of our total flow in order for our steady state to happen. Right? Should be like 2D step almost, right? Okay. So alpha is volume in the cycle.
model this reactor, figure out how big it needs to be, what our recycles have to be, and so on. Um, but basically the idea here is that if you have a system where you want to minimize your substrate uh, and you don't want to have the expense of a ridiculously large reactor, this is a way of helping with that. Okay. Um, so the midterm is Wednesday. Uh, next week. Uh, so I was I haven't written it yet. I was wondering how far we were going to get through this. I think we will not have a recycle question. That's from chapter 10 on the reactor on the midterm. But chapter 7 is open to examination, as are the other reactor questions that you'll have practice in your assignment that's due Monday. So where do you think about the last class? Uh, up until the first half of the class.